beautiful girl, the Dola, was sitting in the grass near the river and was brushing her golden hair. She was looking at the water like in a mirror and suddenly she saw two young men in the reflection. They were mighty gods, Pirun and Veles. They came down from the sky to win the love of gorgeous Dadola. The Slavic beauty greeted the gods and said that the god Pirun is dearer to her than all the others, and at the same minute Veles turned to smoke and disappeared. However, he didn't accept his defeat, and before he disappeared he touched Dodola and she fainted. Her mind went to a deep sleep, and her soul was making an incredible journey. She found herself among the snow-white clouds. There she saw Veles again. He gently took her hand and put it to his chest. The god began to cover her face with kisses. He stroked her hair with his heavy hands. He touched her cheeks and sweet lips with his lips. So what was the intimate life of people and gods in ancient Slavic Russia? What sacred rituals and traditions they had between a husband and a wife? Why this information was so locked and lost intentionally? What was the meaning of the word love? And why to love meant to be sorry about the person? All this and even more about intimate sexual life of Slavic pagan people we are going to find out today. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Stacy, and we are talking about the other side of Russia. So grab something strong, make yourself comfortable and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell, not to miss anything. And we are starting. You may be surprised, but Russian Slavic pagan people didn't confess love to anyone because the word love meant completely another thing. First time the word love любить, was mentioned in the agreement between князь Igor and Byzantium in 944. And from that time other countries will see what love the Greeks have to Russia. Here love is friendship, harmony. But how Russians were talking about feelings then? The most ancient marriage proposal is written on a birch bark from ancient Novgorod, from Mikita to Anna. Marry me, I want you, and you want me, and for that we have the witness, Ignat. Even the historian Sergei Tsvetkov wrote, in this delicate sphere, for a long time the physiology was supreme, the relationships between man and woman was expressed by the word yet, which means to have a sexual connection. Before the Christianization of Russia, there was a polygamous marriage, and it was pretty okay to have several wives and many mistresses at the same time. And this was condemned a lot by the church, of course, though this tradition stayed in Slavic Russia for many more centuries. And even when the husband died, his mistress with their kids could take a part in sharing his properties. Mistresses themselves couldn't take anything, but they could be set free together with their kids. According to historians, traditional culture was pretty far from love as we see it today. This feeling was never the aim or a thing to 
find. Famous folklorist of 19th century Alexander Afanasyev wrote that this love we mean today, it was more like some mystic power over a human soul evoked by some magical methods. Peasants described love passion as a feeling of pity. Here's the extract from the old interview of Avdotia the peasant about her love to the son of village writer Stepan. Three years ago she suddenly felt pity about one peasant from the village. It was Stepan Borisov. She could watch him forever and when she didn't see him, she felt a great sadness for him. And this very Stepan was one to have a spell, a walking body and soul fire. Slavic people were very lovable, they knew a lot of the art of carnal love that we can see in numerous hidden tales and songs. Viktor Hachalin created a big exhibition with erotic sculptures made of birch bark. Although the magical word of Slavic love has been destroyed for centuries, the master recreated everything that is sung about in naughty chistushkas or songs. It took him half a year for only one work. This exhibition is only one in the world, nothing forbidden there and everything realized as it is in life. It demonstrates the diversity of connections between a man and a woman. Our ancestors, according to folklore, knew a lot about love games. The artists showed cheerfulness, passion and even humor over night dates of Slavic people. This kind of love was a part of nature, cosmic beginning. Even the gods loved each other just as humans did. Christianic Church tried their best to erase these kinds of knowledges about the art of love, and they knew what they are doing. To control a person's strongest energy was to take control of the very spirit of people. Erotic traditions of Slavic people didn't touch only the marital bedroom, all nature was felt with love. The whole world is filled with energies of closeness, saidus, fusion, but they are not vulgar, they are not reduced to that short-term quick and consumptive comp- fact. It is a process of a complex structural cult that you enter, and not just with the object of passion, but also with the forces that it reflects with things that stands behind it. What were the main rituals including erotic games? Why men and women did sewing works naked? And how husband and wife were helping each other to gain energy with the help of the sound? All these and even more we are going to find out in the second part of the video. I'm not saying goodbye, just see you soon.